is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Get the Trunk. Oh, hanging out with my friends. Season five is rocking and rolling. Uh, so excited to be back with everybody tonight. Thanks for hanging out. There are, uh, I mean, I hang out with uh, mostly intelligent people. This this crew here is, is a well-read group. Uh, I, I would think you guys are a fan of book reading, right? No. Books? Oh, not no. you anymore, Skid. I no, know I that that's, read. that's right. <laughs> Skid can no longer read. Lost the power to read. He gave up the habit. It happens. Yep. Yep. It is a habit. You got you to gotta stick with it's it. the only <laughs> book I can read now. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> basketball. 85, 96 basketball. 95, 96 basketball that's almanac. The that only is, year that That's mattered. one year, that book? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. It's the size you, of Dune. I can read you Tony Kukoc's entry. <laughs> <laughs> Kukos was considered one of the greatest players ever in Europe starring for Benetton oh wait no I lost it again I can't read now <laughs> <laughs> I had it, it for a second there I was, I was <clears> hopefully you could bring it back it comes and goes what are your guys thoughts those of you that do like to read books and have kept up with it do you enjoy a Kindle absolutely not no no. Books are Three trophies. Three nose. Books Sydney? are trophies. Um, Books are trophies. I tried. I had a kid. I had like an early Kindle. I think before it had the backlit screen. Oh. Um, they were like hard to read. They were rough. Did you have uh, one of those Kindles that had like all, like the whole keypad at the bottom of it? Maybe. It was like a whole a bunch of like tiny little keys. But uh, I didn't really like it. I thought, I think I got it like end of high school before college because I thought, I won't lug around so many books, you know, I'll just yeah. like, take my Kindle because I was moving to New York City. Um, but I just didn't like it. I, I don't know. I Yeah, I, I say no. I didn't do it for me. I have friends who love the Kindle and they're like, it frees me from the shackles of bookshelves and whatever. Mm -hmm. But I like my bookshelves too. I like having books. I think Troy's right for once. Are you still you. friends with them? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Big of you. Because I'm... Yeah, because I'm the bigger person and I'm nice. <laughs> See, you can look down on them. Yeah. Francis, oh, you were immediately my, like, <laughs> you were immediately like, no. Absolutely no way. not. No Absolutely shot. Absolutely not. Yeah, I've tried it. I tried it. I had like a, I had a nook for a while. Oh, a and nook. That's, that's what I had. Yeah, a nook. Yeah. I had a nook. It was like, it was nice. It was like, it was gifted to me. And I was like, oh, this is great. And I never tried it. I thought the idea would be cool, but like. You, it's like the interface is all weird and like you want to turn a page and it ends up like turning three pages and then it's like you're just scrolling and then it like keeps like instead of just reading the bottom of the of the page it like scrolls to the next page and you're just like I just want to read a fucking book like why is this so hard let me turn the fucking page I, that was it I couldn't I couldn't also it's hard to bring in the bathroom wow uh, it's hard to bring to the bathroom yeah the, the, the nooks like you can't I don't know. I feel yeah, like they weigh like eighty pounds. It's hard well, to like, lug it in there. They're just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bathroom reading. Come on, I'm not the only one that does bathroom reading. Am I? No, ba really? bathroom reading's great. I, I. It's just I don't know. You can't like one hand. It's it's weird to one hand with a nook. And I like, see what you're saying. What do you, you want to hold? Other hand? What do you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes I. I, I, I let's let's <laughs> not get into it. I don't need to get into <laughs> it. I'm just. I'm, I've already said too much. No, now I, know, now I want to know. The Urban Francis. Dictionary has a few words for what so he's get doing. Let's the trunk. All right. What, uh, what episode is this one? It's called the uh, Albuquerque Trombone. <laughs> uh, Troy, uh, you said trophies? Trophies? You like people to see what you've read? Well, no, they're personal trophies now, and I, I've i been throwing out my trophies, <laughs> actually. I, In the uh, trash can? Yeah, well, here's the thing. You take them I, to the library. Yeah. I don't read anymore. I would love to, but there's just too many games, and I feel like I, if I'm reading something, it should be for work. I, I, I don't have time to read. And if I'm reading for play, I'm neglecting my duties as a father. There's really no uh, in-between. And so yeah. I would love to read, but in order to do so, I'd have to wake up at 4 a.m. Uh, and read for an hour. 
Uh, that would be the only time. Or like in the half an hour after my wife goes to bed before I go to bed, be like, I'm going to read instead of watching uh, an episode of The Office I've seen 3,000 times. And <laughs> I've made my choice. Uh, but back in the day, I was I was always adamant about goodbye. I, I want to own the book because I read it and then it goes on my shelf. But as we've, you know, we move, we bought a house and everything. And then I'm just at a point where I'm like, I don't. I don't need these books anymore. And I was going to donate them, but I don't have time to do that. So I think they've been sitting in my car. I've got two boxes of books. I think I think it's time to just fucking throw them out. I'm oh, just going come to throw on. Them what do you mean you don't have time to I do that? I don't have time. I got to go to a library. I got to talk to a librarian. No, they don't even have to. Weird. Just leave them outside the door. It's better yeah, than throwing drops. it in the trash. There I don't think that. Drops. No, you dump them you've got like to make an a, appointment. Like a drug addict outside of an emergency room. <laughs> uh, there are a bunch of fucking plays and books on acting and screenwriting that have all changed. Like the, they're garbage. Nobody wants them. We I'm, work I'm in New up. York City. Bring them next time you drive into the city. Leave them on the sidewalk and write free on the cardboard box. Well, I might get a ticket for that. Write you can't just leave on it. What? Write what? <laughs> Free parentheses bed bugs. Bed bugs. Free bed bugs, yeah. <laughs> I should check the co- inside covers. There could be notes in there. Cash. I haven't done that yet. After yeah. that, maybe. And then, yeah. Box on the side of the street, like right outside the office. You want me to leave a box of Tom <laughs> Robbins books and uh, <laughs> Samuel French plays with my, <laughs> with my part <laughs> highlighted? <laughs> People That's really going to want that. Uh, <laughs> Sa- do they still have a store? Sam Samuel French? French? Uh, There's like the, the New York... Uh, theater bookshop or something but yeah. I don't know if Sam French has a who did knows? they ever have a store yeah. or was it always the New York theater the bookshop the theater will be dead in five years doesn't matter yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I've, I haven't been in there in a long time I don't even know if it's still there our children will never see a play <laughs> that is oh so God. not true Stop. it's true there's no reason to because you know what you'll do be like mom dad I want to see a play and you'll go here you go and they'll be like Yay, I'm at the theater. Uh, bloop, 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 For our <laughs> listening audience, Troy just put on sunglasses. And yep. <laughs> that's a play. That's how glasses. plays are going to be. <laughs> Why leave the house? Why drive all the way in the city, pay hundreds of dollars to see some shit show with the, uh, the backup actors? No, thanks. Mm. <laughs> you know, there are really good shows <laughs> yeah, with there the main are good, actors. Good no, not anymore. <laughs> they're, on, they're on strike. It's, it's all backups. <laughs> it's all backups. <laughs> theater will be dead in four years. I've been telling you theater is going to be dead for the past 30 years. It's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've been saying it for 30 years. And I remember at the launch of the Glass Cat of Podcast, in episode one, you said that the, it, it's already dead. <laughs> it was eight years ago. <laughs> Made a comeback. It's still kicking. It's still kicking. Lifeless. Like when you stamp a fly and the fly's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, American like I just theater. Put all of my force into killing that fly, and it's still kind of alive. <laughs> That's the American theater. <laughs> That's so sad. That's it's so sad. Uh, Sydney, do you care about the theater? Yeah, about yes. American theater. Yeah. Okay. What? You just of didn't. You, you weren't like. Nah, blah. You just sat there, kind of smiling. There's no. There's no argument. Just with let Troy. it happen. Yeah. Well, n- no, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm just an standing by while it and watched while no. the American theater was murdered by Troy. <laughs> I'm, I'm this an city, actor. this fucking city, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an actor and I love plays. Uh, I like mu- I like musicals, not all musicals, but I have seen many musicals that I've enjoyed. I really like plays. I've done plays, and I would love to do a play on Broadway, like, of course. I'd love to do a play off Broadway. I'd love to do a play (laughs) so far away from Broadway that you can't even say Broadway within the same sentence. Under Um, Broadway. I haven't done a play in a while, but but I love theater. Yeah, I, I hope that theater does not die. That would be extremely sad. But do you think he's right? Do you think that that's the way it's going? No, and I think people said this about cinema too. Like when they made the talkies, they were like, well, this is gonna fuck everything up. (laughs) Right. And then- you know, cinema became huge. And then they were like, well, this is going to kill theater. And it didn't. And I still think it's not. I mean, we've been oral storytellers since primitive yeah. times. Like, why would we stop doing that? <laughs> this is such a mongrel. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? There's no arguing. It makes All no right, sense to say. Now I'm it. interested yeah. in the theater. Looks <laughs> 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 like theater's making a comeback. Yeah. <laughs> you want to make a bet, Troy? It's alive and well in my pants. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's put yeah, you money guys on should, this. You guys should make a bet. Will there be a play 
on Broadway in a Broadway <laughs> theater in a decade from now. Yes. <laughs> no. You Troy? say no? No. Uh, the world's going to end. Aliens are coming. <laughs> <laughs> Bet on that. Yeah, and that's when think... Broadway's going to thrive. Troy's <laughs> aliens are here. I saw this thing on TikTok that says they're already here. <laughs> <laughs> and they love the theater. They yeah. and they, <laughs> they love the theater. <laughs> they love it. I will say, for my part, I never want to see a bad play again. Yeah. I don't ever want because, like, seeing a bad play is so much worse than seeing a bad movie. Because yeah. if you, you have to want to leave, like, you have to leave in front of the people who are actually doing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really hard. It's just uh, uncomfortable. It's really yeah, uncomfortable. If it's a movie, they're not actually there. Like, I saw. Um, I saw a stand-up show last night. Do any of you watch current SNL? No. Oh God, no. Uh, some clips sometimes. There's um there's a woman on it now, Sarah uh, Sherman. She's Sarah Squirm, or so she does like the. Oh yeah, she's yeah, funny. yeah, yeah. I know. She's, she's got weird. like a mullet, short like haircut. Her. She makes fun of Colin, whatever on the Daily Update or Jost. whatever it's called. Jost. Um, she's very funny, very weird, but she had a live stand-up show, and there's nothing funnier than when people leave during a stand-up show, whether it is to like get a drink or go to the bathroom, and every time she would be like. Up oh, there goes another one. Late show. Guess nobody really cares about me. A woman, a Jewish woman on stage. And like, it became this like whole thing. And I was like, I love stand up, but you're right. You can't do that in a play. You can't stop no. the play and go, excuse me. Merch is a menace. You can't like make fun of the guy leaving. <laughs> I have seen Troy do that on multiple occasions at Glass Cannon shows uh, at conventions. Pardon me. People get up to leave. They're like, I'm sorry, I have a game demo. And they're like in the back and they get up. As soon as they said, Troy's like, he doesn't like the show, I guess. <laughs> Everybody look at him. <laughs> yep. Look at this piece of shit. Throw the dice at him. Shit. Maybe that would save him. Throw your dice him. at him. Theater. If we can start heckling in plays, I think we would save theater. Oh, there oh, you go. Man. There you go. Right there. <laughs> so you, you, admit, uh, you admit that it's time. My friend Nick yeah. Shelton, he came. Uh, to visit me at at UMass when I was in my in the theater department, and uh, he was just like I was having a rehearsal for something, and he was just like, "Let me just sit in your in on your rehearsal, and I'll heckle you." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> so, <laughs> like we're, <laughs> so I'm rehearsing. This is just funny to me, but like I was making we we're doing this scene. I was just like miming, like getting a, a glass of something, like a beverage. And I hear him this guy go, what you drinking there, fella? It's <laughs> 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 like somebody commenting on everything you did. <laughs> it, was, it was like, well, I don't know. I don't know what I'm drinking. <laughs> that glass is empty. There's nothing in it. <laughs> it's so fucking it. funny. It was so funny. That's you know, great. I think I think my hatred, uh, my newfound sort of mock hatred <laughs> of the theater is because I spent 20 years of my life plus in the theater, like doing theater nonstop. It was my life. And then I moved to New York, went right to grad school, came out, and it was theater, 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 theater. And I just, just feel like I got to a point where I was doing what I considered, and, and my, my peers around me felt was like, Top-notch theater. I was going to Europe doing theater there, watching. Amazing, life-changing theater. And it never... uh it never cracked anything. So I have this sort of like jilted uh, hatred Resentment. of the theater because yeah. of it. So it you're was bitter. Good. You're a bitter yeah. Yeah, old you're bitter. actor. I'm a little yeah. bitter. Also, it's, like most theater is fucking unwatchable. That's right. true. Yeah. yeah. And so that, most it can, is if you're talking about <laughs> all of it all combined. But yeah. like, yeah. so most stand up is unwatchable all right. combined, you know? Most, uh, yeah. most TV. Uh, yeah. You could say that about just about any art form. Uh, it's like 90 you know, most podcasts are unlistenable. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's a business. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like it's all, it, once it becomes an industry, everything gets mass produced. The stuff that's good is like two percent. The rest is just like hammering yeah. out crap. And also, yeah. like when you go to like Poland. Like theater out there is a revered art form. Like yeah. everyone from every walk of uh, walk of life, every class in society loves, appreciates, and supports theater. Here, it's just not like that. Theater is like the only theater that gets recognized is commercial theater. And if it's and, and like people who are like I'm going to the theater, they're going to watch garbage. You know, what I mean, like the the amount of like really true good theater, it just doesn't get appreciated, doesn't get seen because there's no money going to support that. Um, so oftentimes, I mean, even at the highest yeah. levels, like even at the even on Broadway, Broadway plays, they don't make any money. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like after yeah. you combine all of the expenses and the rents and everything, and when if celebrity is doing a play on Broadway, they are taking a pay cut, like a right. massive pay cut from what they would make in a film. It's just uh, a whole different world. And, uh, and and even though your tickets are so expensive, like I just have more knowledge now than I ever did of like the back end of theater management and the rent on those properties and the what it costs to upkeep and keep them running. And it's just like they have to charge people an arm and a leg and they still the people that work those jobs like they they're barely getting by and i'm yeah. not, not just the actors but all the crew like all those people that they they're in it because they love it they they you know what i mean that's the only reason yeah so yeah but uh it is it is it is sad compared to like when you talk you know you think about london and stuff like that and, and eastern europe and it's just it is uh revered like you said and yeah that's awesome i actually said revered Revered, he yeah, did say he revered. Did, correct word. Because he's a he fancy said man. I'm a fancy man. <laughs> revered. <laughs> Let's get back into the trunk. Shut up. No. Shut up again, the trunk. <laughs> uh, it's no, time to return. Trunk. Okay, okay. I'm going. It's time to return to the Dorchester okay. house, question mark. Where are our agents as they pursued... A, a lead of uh, missing agents inside a uh, psychiatric facility in Boston. They have had the tables completely turned and they have become patients in the hospital themselves. It is uh, a, how to say this appropriately. Um, it really is a mind beep <laughs> and there's just no way around it. Uh, you guys are in it fully and i think that you're doing an amazing job as characters of approaching this like a problem to be solved neil for neil he is a rat in a maze and he's looking for the cheese he's not going to freak out bobby is trying to keep his keep it under control so that he doesn't appear to be crazy right and roger is telling vicky we got to play the game this is a Delta Green operation. Let's not forget it. We are still on an operation. We're going to find out what's going on here, and we're going to solve the problem. But we got to play the game in order to do it. Vicky is getting in the zone, and she's out there trying to find clues, trying to find answers. In so doing, she comes across a very, very old patient who Deborah Carver referred to as Sunshine, a woman in her 90s. Vicky spoke to her. And the woman is uh, can't really communicate, whether she is mute or senile. We don't really know. Uh, but Vicky started rattling off names to her. Asadera Bondi. I don't remember who else. I don't know if you said J.C. Lenz or if you said. I said uh, Lundin. Yeah, uh, that's right. Henry <clears throat> Lundin. Like you said some of these names. Old guy names. Names from like back then. Old um, guy names. Old guy yeah, names. A bunch of old guy names. Like Ebenezer. <laughs> 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 you, you just keep saying old guy names it's not getting anywhere she's old they're old i assumed she knew them <laughs> you know this the right, so what if they had, what if she was someone who was once a contemporary in in real time in the real world of asa darabondi right yeah she rattles off these names but the only name that seems to elicit any sort of response is michael whitwer the missing dea agent who uh, w w apparently um, uh, came to this facility and then went missing. The uh, she she decides maybe I can ins if she if she's mute perhaps she could uh, write something down for me or something. So I will take her to the art room in the Dorchester House where we can get access to paints and crowns and that kind of stuff in order to uh, transmit maybe some information while doing so she walks uh, her past roger comstone roger meanwhile is in a conversation with mr wild a uh, man whose face appears to have suffered severe burns he's deformed and uh, is the only one so far who seems to believe that roger is newly into this hospital and that he is uh, mentions to roger that he has been come that roger has come under the notice of the king that is why he is here and he tells Roger that he would love to, uh, if he wants to get into his little book, he might be able to help him. A little book he says that he doesn't write in. He merely goes to sleep and things are written in it when he wakes up. And those things tend to happen generally. So very, very strange happenings all around. But as Vicky wheels up 
This older woman known as Sunshine, Roger recognizes her as Dr. Lyra Westover. (laughs) Has to be the same person. And let's pick up right there. Um, I could do a few more things, but I'm not going to. So let's just pick up right there. uh, And yeah, we'll start with you, Troy. What, What do you do? She's about to walk, wheel her away toward the art room. Um, he says, uh, sorry, Mr. Wild, we'll have to do a little Q&A later. I have to, uh, see an old friend. No problem. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. And, uh, he'll walk over to Vicky and Lyra. And he'll just kind of lean down to look at her and be like hey there hello she doesn't she's not talking Lyra (laughs) it's uh it's me Roger she's like her eyes start to move toward you. And you hear him say the name Lyra, Vicky, and you know this name. Yeah. And she looks right at you, Roger. But she's not saying anything, but she's looking you right in the eye. He just kind of looks up at Vicky, looks back at her. Where, uh, where did you find her? She's a patient here. They call her Sunshine. They said Somebody said she doesn't talk. She was just in this wheelchair. I- I'm trying to bring her to the art room so I can I can have her maybe write something. She wanted to tell me something when I said Whitwa. Yeah, let's go. Let's go to let's go to the art room. This and as she's wheeling, she's like, "This is this is um, the Westover from the play from." Yeah, it's it's a long story. I don't think we ever really talked about it. But, you know uh, her. Not her, but yes. We did a... Play together. We did a play um, together. <laughs> just real <laughs> quick. Off, off, Vicky, Peter's dead. You did, you did know this a, a oh, little I bit. Did. Because you were in the room where you saw her in a hospital gown. Oh, right. And she spoke to Roger. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Uh, but do I know that they worked together? Did he tell me that? I imagine while we're, well, yeah. maybe it didn't come up while we were Maybe married. it didn't come up because it would have been the time after you were divorced. That would have been the first time uh, okay. that yeah. Roger did an operation oh, right. with her in, in real time. God. Okay. Uh, when, 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 we, when we were separated, we, uh, I was uh, put on a mission with her, but it wasn't an old woman. It was She was in her prime. And had, yeah. I, had I done a mission with her son yet or no? That hasn't happened oh. in the time. That hasn't happened yet. Oh, wow. oh my god. Oh, man. Such a, it so, is a mind leap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. But Roger also has recollections of both all these timelines and he's like and I feel like I feel like I know another Westover. Anyways, let's oh, let's Hold go on to one second. Room. I just want to point out cuz you brought up Gavin. Another important point and Roger might remember this. The conceit of Gavin uh, I don't know how much he told you in character, but you knew. I, I think he did actually, because like you, I remember you going to him, like seeing his name and being like, yo. Um, his whole conceit as a character really was that his mother was missing and that he had been looking for her. She had been gone for a few years. All she right. went Whoa. missing. Oh my God, right. Fuck. So, I mean, you're thinking of this, remembering this, and be like, his mother was in a psychiatric facility as an impossibly old woman, maybe, like at this, the very time that he was doing this operation with you. Wow. A few years from now. Wow. What? Oh, God. Should have gone looking. You could have found yourself. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I just wanted to slip that in there. Continue. Yeah. Um, Let's go. Let's go to the art, art room. Yeah, we make our way, but... I, I, just so I understand the timeline correctly, like, but the, this is wrong. She she wouldn't be ninety. Yes, this is this is very wrong. This is all 
very wrong. Something must have s- happened. She could be stuck here. She she could be like Whitworth. She could be like. She could have gone to Dorchester House. She could have ended up here. Who knows how long she's been here? Yeah. I wheel up to the art room door. This wheelchair has a squeaky wheel, and someone <laughs> should really take care of it. It really does. <laughs> uh, okay, so you come up to the art room, and there is a uh, an orderly that uh, works that room, and he is uh, happy to you know set you up with whatever supplies you need to like feel artistic and so there's paint there's watercolor paints and there's uh uh yeah like markers and you know that kind of stuff everything soft tipped everything uh non uh dangerous and paper and all that stuff and we'll just say you know like he kind of can get you what you need uh does he have any name tag or like any no there's no signifying yeah um thank you so much for all this stuff, can I have markers? And he puts down markers. Paper. He gave you everything you asked for. Okay, thanks. Uh, and then I w- I go over to Sunshine and Roger at the table, um, and I hand out stuff to every like to all of us as if we're all gonna draw. And I slide mm-hmm. the paper to Sunshine, and I give her a marker. I put it into her hand, um, and I say. It's okay. Can you, can you write how long you've been here? Or she starts like takes this paint and like as she dips it into the, like the watercolor, it just like spills, it spills over. Oh, I come on. Come on, you dummy. (laughs) (laughs) What's wrong with you? I give her a marker. I'm not giving her the paint. I take the paintbrush out and I go, that was a bad idea. And I give her a Crayola non toxic marker. Give her a turn of the century ink quill. (laughs) Yeah. Like ink with quill. Give her a console with AutoCAD loaded up. I give her fine dyed powder that she has to mix herself to make an ink. (laughs) She, She begins to like put this green-ish wet paint onto this Why is she paper. doing the paint? What? Why is she doing the paint? I get Fine, do the paint. Oh, the marker? You did a marker? Well, she can do or the She paint. takes a marker. She starts going around with a marker. Green marker. And her hands are so so shaky and so not responsive to what she wants them to do that it's like super janky. But first you get the sense that she's making a a circle sort of like a larger circle and then she's oh. making like a like a um oh what she she's putting a, a line uh down the middle of it and then uh it stops in the middle like a like a radius line then she makes another line from the center moving out but it doesn't go all the way it goes about halfway uh to the edge like it's half the radius and then she just starts jabbing the marker around it and you start to see that it is the face of a clock is what she seems to be drawing what time is she putting yeah. it at it's about two o'clock based on what she has done so straight down uh you know and then like one off to the up and to the right <laughs> what two, the fuck two, <laughs> Vicky says two, <laughs> two, two o'clock two Two o'clock in the afternoon. Roger looks at his two o'clock. Two a.m. <laughs> two a.m. Roger checks is, his two. Is it two a.m.? No response. It's just two. And then it's just kind of like nonsensey drawing, but yeah, drawing like two. a clock is face. Something is something. He gets down. He goes, "Hey, is something going to happen at two? She just looks at you. Mm-hmm. Just make a, a line, if yes. She doesn't do anything. Okay, not gonna happen at two. Um. Uh. Do you know how to get out of the night floors of of here? Make a line, if yes. 
She takes this paper and like pushes it aside, like a little bit of like frustrated. And then she just grabs like another paper and she looking around. She starts drawing a straight line down and then a line across 90 degrees and then a line up and then a line across at 90 degrees to make a rectangle, a big rectangle. And then she draws this bar kind of across the middle of it, this thick bar in the middle. And then lengthwise, lengthwise. Yep. And then sort of marks (laughs) two markings halfway up on the left and halfway down on the left and you start to see a like a, a janky pictionary picture of a door with like a bar like a push bar door uh what and, all the, and you immediately start thinking of like the like the roof access door in the McAllister building like the the uh yeah you know, it looks like like an aluminum door is kind of like what it looks like is being drawn. Did you come here through a different building? Nothing. Nothing. Maybe she's telling us a door appears at two and that's a door we could use to get out. Is that is that the door we used to get out? Lyra. And Lyra. she's just like hammering the door. The that marker and it starts making marks in the door like over and over again. Is that good, good door? <laughs> door good? Why, she's not deaf, Roger. Slaps her with all his might. Ah! Roger! <laughs> <laughs> um, the wheelchair it- tumbles. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. You have seen your citizens. Nothing funny. like a little elder abuse. Come on. Oh, we're having a good time. Vicky. <laughs> Vicky, um, <laughs> Vicky says, Michael Whitwer, you, you looked at me when I said Michael Whitwer. Oh. And she reaches over and grabs the, the, uh, piece of paper that she had thrown away. With the, with the clock on with it. With the clock face. And she points at the clock. 2 p.m. And she points at the door. She That's points at the clock and points Widmer, at the door. Widmer comes at two through the door. She draws, she scrapes out the uh, the line. Like she, she crosses out through the line that she drew to the two. And she just draws another line to the four. And then she crosses it out and she draws another line to the six. Every two hours. And then she crosses it out and she draws another line to the 10. Oh, she skipped four hours. Every two, and then every six hours, it switches to four. <laughs> what is wrong with you, old lady? <laughs> it's very hard to understand. Good. Give her a good shake. Um, can I roll <laughs> something uh, with like, um, like forensics, or I don't know, like my art forger, like understanding codes, or like, can I just roll not as Sydney, but as Vicky, who's smarter than Sydney? <laughs> no. You asked this before, (laughs) and in some cases, yes, if it was, like, actual postal forensics, I would let you do that, but this is uh, something the players have to solve, Uh, Hmm. because Vicky has no more information than you have in this case, Uh, but I will, um, all right, how about this, she stops, and she, she starts to draw again, and it's toward the bottom of the clock face, she starts to make a mark from the clock the edge of the clock straight down and then right next to it straight down and then from the top of the clock a line straight up and then a little next to that a line straight up and you start to see that there's something coming off of this clock face like a strap maybe like watch it's a watch it's a watch Somebody's wearing that watch. Someone's watching the door. Watch. 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 They're watching us. Watch the door. Watch the door. They're watching us right now. And as you turn around, you see uh, 
Dr. Friend comes walking into the room and you hear him uh, say, Mr. Wilde, won't you come with us, please? And you turn and you see Bobby and Neil are standing right behind uh, Dr. Maximo Friend. And he looks over. And he met, remember, short guy, graying hair, little goatee, tiny glasses. And he's like, oh, wonderful, Vicky, Roger, would you come with us, please? It is. And he points to his watch. It is. It's time for group. What you time come is with it? Us. It's time for group. Group. And he uh, turns around and walks out. Immediately, you start to get this feeling like, oh, this is like regularly scheduled group therapy. This is, yeah. you know, uh, something that we do here. And like, Vicky, you know this to be true. I don't know if Roger does, but Vicky, you get that that sense. Um, but Sunshine and Sunshine is just sitting there, her head lolling. Are there any crayons? Yes. I would like to take two two crayons and stick them up my sleeve. Okay. I do that on the... I put on the Go table. ahead and roll an opposed stealth roll for the orderly that is watching you like a hawk. Oh, my Ooh. stealth isn't good, though. Well, then you're going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cross out her drawings. I was going to spill paint on the drawings, but yeah, I just want the crayons for other reasons. To eat. Rats. <laughs> I rolled a 50. I got a 36 under 40. Mm. On search, and just ah uh, nope 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 nope. Sorry. I want I want Sorry. them for group. I want them for group. That's okay. That's you don't need them for group. If you need anything, Doctor Friend will let you know, Vicky. It's okay, Vicky. Vicky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your face is amazing. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. what you would do. She'd be like. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Uh, so go. yeah, he just sees it. Just gently takes him away from you. And uh, I could steal what? every crayon in that room. And, uh, steal and, me a crayon. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Friend is like, come with me. What do you do? What are you doing? I take Sunshine with me. You yeah. see Mr. Wild gets up, puts out his cigarette, and, and is following. Wait, I'm I sorry. Take, what did, what did I you take say? Sunshine with me. But I follow. I- um, no, Sunshine won't be uh, attending group. Thank you. Um, can you just leave her here so that Henry can return her to her room? Henry. Yes, Henry. Yes. Come on, Vicky, let's go. It's time I'm for com- group. Come on. I'm coming. Come on, Vicky. God damn it. Um, How are you, yeah, Dr. I Friend? Sunshine. And he I starts walking. What did you say? I said, how are you, Dr. Friend? Oh, I'm very well, Roger. Thank you for asking. I appreciate that. It's can very we kind. Sit, can we sit in any chair? Uh, just across the hall here, and uh, on the other side of the large lobby on the first floor, you step into a room, and it is pretty jarring when you walk in, just in terms of color. You open up the door, and there, the walls are pink. They are all pink. It's like bright pink color uh, with these like fluorescent lights over head. So like everything's like kind of oddly bright and you step through and in and there's already a young man sitting in uh, the room. He's in a patient gown as well um, in his 30s. He's slim, fit looking and uh, has like a not a shaved head, but a buzzed uh, haircut. And he's uh, sitting there in a like pea soup green chair. And all of the chairs are the same color. They're like this green, this pea soup green color set against these bright pink walls in the background. And Dr. Friend walks in and there are seats around four, uh, six, Sorry, seven seats around, and Dr. Friend just takes one of the seats. There doesn't seem to be a particular, you know, doctor seat or anything like that. Uh, he just takes a seat and motions for you all to sit down as well. And you'll see that Mr. Wilde comes in, Troy, and takes a seat. 
Then in the door behind you walks Mr. Ed. And he steps in and is watching all of you as you come toward these seats. And oh, please sit down, sit, sit down. What do you all do? Bobby, you first. <clears throat> uh, Bobby looks around, just grabs the closest seat, has, ha, has, sits, sits down, just waiting. Neil? Neil smells the cigarette smoke residue from Roger, and so he tries to sit next to Roger. Uh. <laughs> Excellent. Raj? Roger um, takes in the room. 21 under 82. Anything out of the ordinary? Yeah. You look, you look in the back corner, and you see there is a small table, uh, which at first glance to anyone looks like it would have it would have uh, small paper cups and a little coffee pot and uh, some light food you know out like that's what it looks like it, it would have like to anybody that's like sort of sees it out of the corner of their eye Roger you look closely and you see that in the back corner is a table and it has little paper cups and it has various bottles of liquor and a small wooden box filled with cigarettes. Huh. Um, okay. So, like, I, Roger's taking that in, and he just kind of plays out various scenes in his head. There's one scene where he's, like, got a cup of coffee, and he throws it in uh, Mr. Ed's face as he goes to, like... <sighs> grab the chair and try and impale Dr. Friend with it. <laughs> oh my god. Then there's another one where he has a cigarette he's lighting it and he grabs the highest proof liquor and like <laughs> blows fire <laughs> at Mr. Ed and then starts choking. Uh, so he's like he's having these uh, like uh, scrubs type daydreams of yeah, ways yeah, yeah. that he could like. Love a good scrubs daydream. <laughs> kill them all as fast as possible. Um, and then he just goes can we um, fix ourselves a cocktail? Absolutely. Help yourselves. But please, sit quickly. We'd like to get underway here. Chop, chop. Ed, uh, close us in here, please. And then... Ed closes the door sort of abnormally hard. And then... Shkunk! Pulls this deadbolt lock shut, locking you in. You're not locked in here with us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It's like... Uh, Neil definitely goes and gets a cigarette and and a, and a cocktail or just some scotch or whatever mm -hmm. and takes and, a seat. And all of the bottles are like they look like they're they're from a bar in the 50s or something. Mm -hmm. Like they're yeah. all these like old school bottle uh, labels. Well, it's funny because I was going to say like he, when he lights the cigarette it's like when Rorschach gets his mask back <laughs> you know and Watchmen it's like all I need <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, well Mr. Ed needs to light your cigarette so Ed will come over light your cigarette okay please let's sit down sit down Vicky Vicky are you sitting down yes and she walks over and she wants to sit um, very close to him. To whom? To uh, Dr. Friend. Dr. Friend. Okay, who's sitting next to the unknown fellow? Uh, I think Bobby took that seat. I think the, yeah. All right, Bobby, go ahead and give me an awareness oh, roll shit. or a search, whatever's better. Um, let's see here. What do I got better? A search. Search is 44. I'll go with search. I don't. Yeah, my alertness. Well. Yeah, my, I'm going search. Oh, 66 over 44. That is a critical fail. Oh, no. Bobby slips out of the chair as he goes to sleep <laughs> out and falls on the floor in front of everybody. Dude. Ed comes running over. Bobby, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I just uh, lost, my, lost my footing there for a second. I think it's the meds. Just wearing off. So I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh, the meds. Yes, the meds. We'll have to get to that soon, won't we? 
Okay, let's um, start today's meeting off speaking about the most recent events. Um, obviously, there was a bit of a hubbub with uh, Mr. Ed and Roger, and uh, let's clear the air here. Um, does anyone have anything that they'd like to say uh, about the horsing around uh, that happened earlier? And Neil looks, casts a glance at Mr. Ed. He says, a horse is a horse, of course, of course. <laughs> no one can talk to a horse, of course. That is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mr. Ed. <laughs> and Ed is just standing there. No reaction. He's just almost like looking straight ahead, almost like a prison guard or something. Very good, Neil. Very clever. Is that all? Okay, I don't want to press anyone, so let's uh, let's start with some let's start with some openers, okay? Um, Tim, how have you been feeling lately? And the young man with the buzzed hair is like, good, uh, good, yeah, I'm good. Uh, would you like to expand on that, Tim? Do you have any anything that's uh, happened recently? Are you are you settling in okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm. Um, I am. I, I just I think that there's. Uh, I mean, it's it's a lot, you know. It's it's a lot. There's a lot of a um, lot of responsibilities. A lot of. Uh, you know, when you just have, when you have these events and th these people, and I mean, uh, time, uh, the way it all connects, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to manage, you know, it, it is hard to manage. And I can get a little bit frustrated sometimes trying to put everything together, you know, figure out how it all fits together and how. And you know uh, what my job is to to make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be when it's supposed to be. It's just uh, it's just a lot. It's it's a burden, and I um, but I know it, I know it's mine to bear. I know it's mine to bear. That's right, Tim. It is yours to bear, and we're all very lucky to to have you here working on our on our behalf. But well, well, let me ask uh, let me ask you, Bobby. Uh, Bobby, do you enjoy the, let's say, the activities that you uh, d decide to do? If you decide to do something, do you generally like it? Uh, <clears throat> uh, sure, sure, yeah. I, you know, do it. I like it, sure. You never had a problem with that? <laughs> Liking activities of your own choosing? Uh... No, no, I'm, you know, that's what normal people do, right? They do things they like. And as you're responding to him, Bobby, your skin begins to crawl, your blood starts to run cold, and you start to feel like your heart is stopping and then racing kind of all at the same time. And the vision at the corner of your eye starts to like crawl in. And rather than getting like total darkness, you're seeing these pink walls are sort of uh, vanishing away. And in their place, you're, you start to see the call, the like marble columns of some giant royal court. <laughs> and as your vision, you like blink, and as your vision coalesces into the center, you see that Dr. Friend, who's looking at you, looking you right in the eye, very like interested in your answer, is not sitting on a lime green chair in a pink room, but is sitting in a golden chair next to an enormous throne <laughs> in a room that is filled with the like a tall windows and glamorous insides of like a medieval castle <laughs> what's wrong bobby is something wrong I, <laughs> activities of your own choosing bobby do you like them i i i uh uh sorry what what little don't upset yourself bobby I, it's okay 
It's okay. Uh, let's let, let, let's move on. Let's move on, Vicky. Um, we've mentioned this before, but I'd, I'd like to touch on it again. Um, you've spoken here before of the failures uh, of your past. Um, do do you still get bogged down by them? Are you still worried uh, in the present about things that have happened before, things out of your control? What failures? And you start to feel the same sort of thing. The, 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 the image that you're seeing is changing. You feel like you're not in this... Bl- the same thing that Bobby is seeing. Like, you saw Bobby get flustered, and you're like, what's wrong with Bobby? And all of a sudden, like, you start to see you're not in a pink room. You are in some sort of castle. And you look up, and you see these giant banners hanging to either side of the throne. And this large sigil is emblazoned on the black banners. And you recognize the yellow sign. (laughs) Give me a goddamn (laughs) Saturday roll! Uh, This might be the one. Roll hard. 50. (laughs) <laughs> Under you will never fail. 62. A sanity I, roll. I have also save us all. I rolled 50 something. Ever. I'm going to change die just because it's boring for me. Like I have every single <laughs> roll. <laughs> it's too easy. It's well, I always easy. say, I always say, uh, you know, ever since playing Call of Cthulhu and I, I run more Delta Green than I play, but it is the only role I wish to fail every time is the sanity check. I think oh. it's, the, it's the only game where I want to fail a role and it's always consistent. I never enjoy passing it. Uh, <laughs> now, it would probably be different if I had some long-term campaign and a character I loved and all that kind of stuff, but I just right. haven't been in that position quite yet. Um, um, the, the throne. Who is on? The throne. Is, is someone on the throne? No, it is okay. an empty throne. Um that uh, but yeah you see the full the red carpet and everything and uh, uh this the throne is empty and and he is sitting on a small golden chair next to the throne uh dr friend is yes um vicky just like cl- closes her eyes and and just like hits herself in the head just like <laughs> hits herself hits herself uh, Vicky, Vicky, and Ed immediately comes up to you and grabs your hand, <laughs> your wrist, and is just holding it. He's not hurting you. He's just restraining you from hurting yourself. Vicky, ease down. It's, as we said, your past failures, they are in the past. There's nothing that you can do about it now. <laughs> it is best to move forward, right? Always forward. I consider all my failures to be strengthening to my current position and and mindset and I'm not gonna be told <laughs> I'm fine let go of my arm and he looks at Dr. Friend Dr. Friend looks at Ed and just slowly nods and then he releases your arm I don't understand these fake these fake decisions we get to make and the fake freedoms we get to have I'm sorry I don't know what you mean I want more permission I want more access and I I want more permissions to do activities of course you can have that Vicky as soon as you behave alright I am you must behaving. act you must act appropriately in a calm demeanor you must not get into fights with Ed you know these are setbacks these are setbacks and he all of a sudden his look changes and it's like and you're in this throne room and his voice is echoing Ugh. through this giant space you must get in line if you're going to make progress. His voice eases down again, a strange smile on his lips. We'll come back. We'll come back. Mr. Wild, you... Do you ever think that you are... 
being hunted. That you are the the target of someone who's out to get you. Uh, only uh, Roger has talked to Mr. Wilde, has a little bit of a vibe on him. Mr. Wilde just... No. I, <clears throat> people that come to me generally are... They need help, and I... I offer it to them where I can. You know. And why do you do that? Because I... I want to, you know... I want to be... be judged. I want to get to the king and be judged. As, as, I don't want to linger here forever, do I? No, of course you don't. None of us do. And how is it you're going to get to the king? Oh, reputation is everything. What people think of you, how people see you, perceive you. I, I, I will change that for others where I can, and perhaps if I do enough, it will grant me the audience I, I seek. Perhaps. That is interesting. You have helped me in the past, and I appreciate it, of course. You've been very, very helpful. But we all seek the king, don't we? We all seek an audience with the one who can properly judge us. Neil. And as he turns to you, Neil, he begins to ask, have you received an invitation? And when he says the words, have you received an invitation? You see the same scene that everyone else sees. It is replaced by a grand court, a man on a golden seat next to a throne, his voice echoing through this large chamber. Except when he says, have you received an invitation? He is speaking in a completely different language, a language <laughs> that sort of sounds vaguely European and immediately you understand it. You understand the words that he's saying. You understand him saying, have you received an invitation? And you immediately recognize the language as Tartesian, a <laughs> language which you had learned about through a book in Michelle, Va Michelle Van Fitz's apartment. You think all of a sudden you can like speak this language. He asks you, have you received an invitation? I, I, I talk back to him respond in Tartesian I mm -hmm. can you can it's like you know Dr. Friend is it yes it's funny I used to have a lot of Dr. Friends <laughs> <Not anymore, though. laughs> zing zingo <laughs> it's funny you should ask I have received invitations in the past it was to a party of sorts I think it's all Mr. Wilde's head snaps to you you received an, an invitation oh yes to the party oh yes he looks back at Dr. Friend Dr. Friend looks at Mr. Wilde and you did not attend I was unavoidably detained. Unavoidably? To whom did you receive this invitation from? The invitation to the party. His it demeanor as this haughty doctor has changed. He's like asking you desperately and his voice is still speaking Tartesian. It was inside an automaton made in the shape of a little girl, as I recall. A cherub. And he goes to his book and he starts like writing furiously. Looks back up at you. Very interesting, Neil. Thank you. Roger. By the way, Neil and Bobby, can you guys both. Or I'm sorry, Neil, can you give me a sanity roll? Uh, so on Roger's. The, uh, Tartesian and all that. And the we have royal no court. idea of what Neil just said. 
Like we, you know, you all heard it. You all heard it in normal, like English. In English, okay. Oh, okay. Only Neil heard him speak this other language, and he was responding in another language. Jesus, Neil. Uh, Yeah, go ahead, Skid. I failed again, and I I passed my breaking point last time, and we never did. Oh, that's right. We didn't address that. So, uh, make a mark that you passed the breaking point, and that you need a uh, disorder. You it will not manifest now. And then reset your breaking point. So whatever, m- subtract your POW from your current sanity, and that'll get your your new breaking point. Okay. Roger. I was just going to say, Roger has seen now. Uh, I, I I imagine I've noticed that Vicky and Bobby are reacting disfavorably to him. Roger, why are you narrating at me? <laughs> just <laughs> Roger in this his, game. His we alertness. always stay in character. He knows, <laughs> notices this and imagines that it, the only thing that's changed here is that there's something about the doctor's voice. Um, but you know, he's not going to block his ears or anything. He just is kind of bracing himself. Oh, wait. Roger doesn't see this throne room? No, not when he's not being talked to directly by uh, Yeah. So as he turns to you, Roger, yeah, he and knows. you start to see this change happen. And, <laughs> and obviously, you're, you're aware of this. Um, Neil, you take one point of sanity damage. Uh, on that failure and Roger he turns to you and says have you we, Roger we've spoken a lot about home He's now looking at him and there are a few uh, paths um, but I, I just want to touch on something that I, I don't know it's call it a shot <clears throat> in the dark 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 his voice echoing <laughs> in this chamber have you found your bottle You know, I uh, thought that uh, you were here to help us, but now I think you're just here because you lack knowledge. <laughs> what could you, whatever do you mean, Roger? I'm, of course, I'm here to help you. I'm your doctor. No, you're a shitty detective. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vicky, with your human, uh, you see that he is getting rattled. Mm. Oh. Well, if I'm a shitty detective, Roger, it's it's only because I, I'm I'm not very good at getting to the root of uh, what it is you uh, need. That's all, uh, and that is my shortcoming. I'm I'm sorry, but it is my ultimate goal to help you, Roger. No. That is. That's it's all not, I care about. Yes, it's it is. Not, no, your goal is to find answers that you don't have because unlike me, you weren't chosen. Vicky have, laughs. Vicky laughs out loud. <laughs> there's this like ice cold vibe in the room. Broken by feel, Vicky's laughter. It must feel um, terrible. To be on the outside looking in. I've seen my bottle. You have. Wouldn't you like to know the things that we've seen? Where was it? (laughs) I can't remember. Was it, um, when we were going to meet the supervisor? Or no, it couldn't. Maybe it was... I guess it could have been at the party. We were all going to go because yeah. we all had an invitation. And what? she also looks at the doctor. What? Uh, by the way, Mr. Wild, uh, also you would know with your awareness, snapped to you the minute that you said you had you, you had seen your bottle. Mm. Um, that definitely got his attention. He looks I, across. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, you go ahead. Uh, he says, Roger, we are all in the same boat here. We are all in limbo, aren't we? We're all trying to achieve something. And he's looking at all of you. Something great, perhaps, or even just a mere satisfaction of peace and happiness. And uh, as he's talking to you all now, we can see like the, uh, 
the the vision is not changing for all of you. You are all in this court together. The yellow sign hanging, flanking either side of a great throne that is very, very empty with this sort of like little chair with a little man next to the this mm. massive throne. And it's like, we are all trying to get there. It's, it is a struggle that we have to help each other on. That's all. That 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 is all. If if I am asking those questions, that is why. No, Roger is right. We've been there. You haven't. You are jealous. <sighs> Group is about honesty, isn't it? Have you truly been there? Because I will say, honestly, if you were, yes, I would be uh, jealous. Can I roll a human just from everything we've said so far? Like, what would really get under his skin? Yeah. I hate this guy. (laughs) What is wrong with Dr. Maximo Friend? Uh, He's here to help. That's uh, 32 under 83. I mean, you're getting to him. Okay, yeah, just keep doing what we're doing. Mr. Ed. To what end, though, is the uh, question. Well, I- I'm going to turn to Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed, how did they choose him to be the f- pretend doctor here? How come you're not the one in charge? You're strong. You took me down. Why are you letting him call all the shots? Roger, speak with me. I just think it's a fair question. You're not really a doctor. He's not really an orderly. Just some sort of hierarchy was chosen here. You're the maybe the smartest of this group of people that weren't chosen. You just want things from us. You're not here to help us. You're here because you're not special. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, Roger, but I don't think it is called for to bring Ed into this, drag him into it, put him in a position to speak to a superior that way. I thought way. this it's, was a place of honesty. Can Mr. Ed be honesty, honest as well? Mr. Ed, why, why did you let this small little man I mean can't you see how small he is next to that giant throne over there he and looks, Ed is just like staring straight ahead he's not giving you anything he looks so small next to that giant throne that he'll never sit on oh I do not seek to sit on the throne Roger <laughs> the throne is reserved for one and only one do you know that the last king has come Have you heard it? The last king has come. Which king is that? The last king. Roger, um, I think that uh, we've had just about enough of this for today, haven't we? Uh, uh, Mr. Ed, how about you take uh, Roger to the Grey Room, please? (laughs) And... Mr. Ed turns, unlocks the door, opens up the door, puts his head out of it, and just says, Gray Room, real deep. And a bunch of guys come in to the room and they start walking over to you, Roger, and they all start grabbing you. <clears throat> are you going to go quietly or are you going to fight? Yeah, no, I, I, I have to go quietly if it's a bunch of guys. It seems futile, your knowledge of combat. Yeah. Roger makes no... Uh, they come over, they stand you up, and they're not rough, but they're insistent. They start moving you, and Dr. Friend says, that'll be enough for group today. Thank you all. We'll continue this another time. And he stands up to walk out. As soon as he stands up out of that chair, whoosh, this vision just washes away from you. You're in a pink room with lime green chairs, whatever I said, pea green chairs, and Roger is being walked out of the room by you know these orderlies, and a uh, friend is following behind, and the door poof, closes behind him. The chair that he sat in, if that room was a clock, would it be like the two o'clock chair? <laughs> No, he specifically sat in an unremarkable chair. It wasn't like the center chair and everything was like around it. It was just one of the chairs in the circle. But we lose sight of Roger as he is is taken out of the room. And that leaves uh, Vicky and Bobby and Neil uh, in there with Tim and Mr. Wild. Timothy Bale. 
Yeah, Timothy, that's what I was thinking. I wrote Timothy that down. Uh, before we continue on, can I just like retcon that I sat next to um, Dr. Friend purposefully? I wanted to look at his watch. Was uh, there? Sure, you can roll a search. Okay. Yeah, I'm just checking if there was anything interesting about his watch. That is ooh, a four under 54. Uh, no, there was nothing interesting about his watch. Did I catch the time? Um, oh, with a four? Yeah, you caught the time. What, was what a, time a, was it? 11.52 p.m. Ha! <laughs> p.m. <laughs> so I go ahead and roll a sanity check, because that's the exact time it was when you opened your eyes from after the uh, incident. Oh. When I woke up here? Mm hmm When you woke up in the cot with the uh, restraints. Oh, man. Well, you win this round, Joe O'Brien. Uh, uh, 78 over uh, 62. Okay. okay. Now Real I'm going to ding you. I'm going <laughs> to ding you. Three points Ooh. of sanity damage. Ooh. All of the things that have been... <laughs> oh, wow. Now she's just talking shit. Dude, I will make the... I'm going 1d12. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you are, uh, oh gosh, you are, of all the things that are going on here, uh, this just added a layer that was just a bit too far. So yeah. you, you tell me how this, you know, manifests, but seeing that during that meet, or maybe just as before he got up, you saw that the time had not changed since you've been here, that literally no time is passing. Uh, is very very strange, and uh, yeah, and you lose sanity. Um, is is uh, God, what's his name? Is Ed still in the room? No, Ed has walked out with Roger. Left in the room is uh, Mister Wild, Tim, Neil, Bobby, and Vicky. And actually, on that, while Troy's away, let's take a break, and we'll come right back. We waited for 25 minutes for Troy. <laughs> Troy, what the hell were you doing? I had a lot of liquid. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long pee. <laughs> <sighs> I feel better now.
<laughs> um, let's let's go back into the uh, breakout room, the group therapy room with Vicky, Bobby, Neil, Mr. Wild, and Tim. Uh, what are you guys doing? <sighs> Vicky takes a chair with one hand and just slams it into the wall because she's so mad and the time thing and like felt completely taken advantage of by the doctor and that's like talked down to just burst of anger. The just love like, of your life was just dragged out of the room. The love of my <laughs> life. Uh, she just like slams the chair against the wall and then sits <laughs> down on the floor. <sighs> Mr. Wild walks over. It is. I knew it. I knew he lied to me. <laughs> You're with him, aren't you? And he nods out the door toward, you know, presuming where Roger just went. You're with him, aren't you? Shut up. I don't know you. You don't know me. <laughs> You're right. I don't know you. I don't know any of you. King, do you know these three? And the one who friend referred to as Tim who Mr. Wilde referred to as King, uh-huh. oh. turns to look at you three. He's just an average-looking 30-something dude. Looks like he was born in Boston. It's a regular dude. Just, like, looks over at you three. He's like, no, you can't say I have. Let me guess. Are you Timothy Bale? I am. Yes. How did you know that? <sighs> Doesn't matter. Have you, have you heard about me or something? Somebody tell you something? I just, we know your name. I'm, my name is Vicky. Hi, Vicky. <laughs> Probably should have opened with that, but Dr. Friend is not very good at what he does. And you are? And he points to Bobby. Bobby, this is my name. Uh, Tim? King. Here I'm King. But you can call me Tim if you like. King is more of a name, less of a title. And you are? And he points to Neil. I am confused. (laughs) <laughs> you are King? I'm King Bile, yes. King I, Bile? That is my curse. Uh, I am King Bile. And, uh, yeah, it's my... Fortunately, there's not much I can do about that. Wait, free, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, this is some Freemason shit. <laughs> no, it's... It's like the it, bloodline. King Bile, you... Sorry, you're a demon? Ah, uh, you could, nah, I mean, it depends who's asking. Uh, the uneducated masses, sure, sure, I'm, I'm a demon. I like to think of myself more as a father of Demons. demonology, <laughs> let's say. You, you were a vet. You have post-traumatic stress disorder. You were a vet. Hmm. You know, that is ringing a bell, kind of. It's, there is something there, but I'll be honest with you, in my position, it, it begets, it starts to get hard to understand events in order. Does that make sense? I met you. I met you. You met me? I, um, I met you. I don't know when. I don't know when. But I met you. You were in a hospital bed. You were. You were in a hospital gown. You. You told me she's, your name. She's talking about the other side, King. She. She saw you on the other side. He's like. Oh, well, that's my fault then. I. I just. I have a lot on my plate. It's hard to remember. Everything, everywhere. All at once. That's copyright. <laughs> Gross. The doctor mentioned you had a job to do. 
What is that? It's... It's the... The... The sequencing, uh, or... The connection of events and people and time. That's sort of my job. Uh, people connecting to who they need, where they need, when they need, so that the events that must take place can take place. Right? Right. You understand that there is a, a play, right? There is a, a play from which everything is... All reality comes forth. And... I keep forgetting they're new. Yeah, they're 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 new. They're so you may think that you I'm I'm guessing you believe you have a life, right? Like that you have a life outside of the hospital. That you Yes, exactly. This is totally normal. It's totally normal. It is a It's a how to think of it. Um A dream? A dream. Yes. That is a word that we can wrap our head around. It is it is a dream of a life that does not exist. It is a everything. All of all of history. All of the people you knew, the events you thought took place, the they're all fictional. They're, they're made up uh, by some need that people have to believe that the king is not writing the play. I, I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it as well. We all are, in a way. But the king and the play and the events, they are at once an Ouroboros, right? A the reality of the king is being vomited and consumed all at once. The world is being destroyed and created at the same time. Am I getting through to you at all? Wasn't there, it's, was there a book or something that we read about someone who was like trying to break the, the charade? Yes, there was a book about a young girl who was trying to stop the dance. Right. Yes. It was a dance that the Phantom was making everyone dance. It was a children's book, the Upside Down It was down a children's yeah. book, yeah. Oh. And so she was, she was a little girl named Abby. Abby. And she was Abby. trying to break the Abigail. Phantom spell on everyone because as long as they kept dancing, they didn't think about their real lives. Mm. And then when she broke the spell and destroyed the Phantom, everyone knew the reality that they were actually living in. Mm. And everyone fell into such a deep depression that it caused mass chaos and the world began to destroy itself as it started to see what it really was and in order to save their lives Abby became the phantom and started the music again mm. oh. to save them from themselves that was the story that Neil found in Michelle Van Fitz's apartment right, right. God. what was the name of the story I don't Rem uh, a world without doors was that it? Yeah, that sounds uh, right. I think so. Uh, I think that I think that, that, that was book. it. I remember that was one of the books that Neil took to to study yeah, on his own. Yeah, world without doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. World without doors. Yeah, Neil took it, and she went into this like other world. I'll, I'll throw it on the uh, I'll throw it on the evidence board. Oh god, she went uh, into yeah. this other world through drowning down. by Emmeline Fitzroy. Emmeline Fitzroy. That's right. She went to the other world by drowning. Yes, yeah. precisely. Right, and Isadara Bondi drowned children. Drowned children. Yeah. yeah. Including a girl, a little girl. Mm hmm. Right. Among others. And Abby could be Abigail, right? I mean, yeah. that's what we thought back in the day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh. All right, let's drown Vicky's, ourselves. Vicky says, <laughs> I am a 48 year old woman from Queens. New York. I have lived for what? <laughs> I'm you, sorry, you just look really good for your age. I yeah, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you <look great>. That's <laughs> awesome, Skip. <laughs> Thank you. He's, he's right. You, I, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> amazing. I never have guessed. Thank you. I'm 48. 
I'm not. I, <laughs> stop complimenting me. <laughs> I always wore sunscreen. It was ingrained in me from my mother. <laughs> smart, smart. I have lived for 48 years and it wasn't in this fucking hospital. You think I don't. You think I, I would lose that part of myself just by being here like you? Because you've lost a part of yourself. The Timothy Bale that I met did not call himself King Bale, some some demon, some king of hell. You are a person. This is this is this is another place that we go to, but you you come back from this place. I don't want to be here. I don't want to to find mm. the king or whatever. <laughs> Whoa, you don't want if you don't find the king you'll be here forever you'll what are you be talking in the, about you'll be in the night world forever if you don't find the king no but i've 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 gone to the night no, floors um, and I, mr I wow left. that's 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 not in that's not entirely true well if they've if they it's complicated you believe yourself to be a 48 year old woman from queens new york you just got to this hospital now, right? That's that world that you consider the real world is imagined. It is not real, though it does exist. That's the tricky part. Most people understand at a certain point that going there is fruitless. You can return, you can return, but you will once again be a part of the play and you will never meet the king and you will have no ability to control any aspect of your life. Do you understand? Who else is like you? There's no one like me. But there's the king. King's right there, right here, look. You, you king, we found king. Like I said, it's more of a name than a title and it's a different sort of job. It's, it's something that, yes, it's hard to wrap your head around. The idea of Tim is something that I feel sort of deep inside, but it comes with a 10 lifetimes of, of, uh, of thoughts and memories that I now have after gaining my position in the night world there's you understand that time has no meaning here there there is no time and so anything can happen at any time and anyone can be anywhere at any time so i think of tim and it mixes in with everything else that i that i think of that i'm a part of and it it gets drowned out by the louder things, by the events that the king has set forth. And it's all like, yes, this is all just like this nonsense is, is coming out to you. But it, it has echoes of the way that Barbus talked to you, where he was so convinced that what yeah. he was saying made sense. But to you guys, it's, you know, it's like he's speaking Latin or something like there's just you cannot wrap your head uh, around it. Um, where where then, is Michael Whitworth? Michael Whitwer, yeah. Well, he tried. He tried to get out, and I don't think he succeeded. King Biles, like, well, he never talked to me. You know, he tried on his own. He went through the door in Dallin's office. Yeah, he. If he did, I didn't know about it, and that is. That's his own. That's his own issue. It's complicated once you get in there. <laughs> you got to know what you're looking at. The door? And this guy, and then uh, Mr. Wilde is like, hold on. You really don't want to see the king. Given this opportunity to be that close to him, to understand the play, essentially to grasp eternal life <laughs> you you don't want to do it you would rather break free of his hold 
you don't want to be in this web. Really? She looks at uh, Murnau and makeshift. Bobby gets triggered by the word control when Tim Timothy Bale says uh, that to break out is to control your own life and he, he, he seizes on that he thinks to his father he thinks about how much control his father had over his life and he, he wants to he still wants to beat him he still holds on to that that need to kind of break free and and best his father so he he looks at him and he says control I, d- I do want control I, I, I want I want to meet the king Bobby <laughs> Bobby, Bobby. <laughs> well I'm sure we could arrange that uh, uh, if you are chosen then John could perhaps take you there if you really wish to go Mm. Bobby nods. Uh, who's who's I'll John? Go. Bobby, stop talking. I'll who's go. John? Bobby. Murnau. John Payload, he's a, he's a patient here. And he has told me that it is that I is refused. I tried, and he said that I am refused. But if you had an invitation, if you really could have gone to the party, then perhaps he, he would take you there if you wish to go. And you would never have to come back to this place or any place ever again. It's like the party. And he's like mm-hmm. wide-eyed looking at you, Bobby. Like, yeah, this guy gets it. This guy gets it. What about you? He points to Neil. Do you, do you want out or do you want in? Mm. Me no think king here. Maybe me king. <laughs> Me have crown. What? <laughs> what crown? Me get crown and mail. Me have crown at home. <laughs> oh my he's god! Thinking tar- he's thinking. He thinks he's saying speaking Tartesian. Uh, <laughs> that's Me great. Have crown at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me have crown. No, Me given we're crown. Not, Me we're wear not crown. getting crown, kids. We Me have crown, crown at home. <laughs> we're not getting. <laughs> Me king. <laughs> Want meet king? King here. Yeah, king he there, he, he king you, he king me is the king. I he, think. me, king. Okay, you may need some more time to think about it. And you, do you want out? To Vicky, she spits on the ground. Do you want out? Is that a yes? I want to go back to my son into my life yes but do you understand that if you go you must break free of the king's hold otherwise whatever life you're living it will always be in control of the king there is only one way to break control from the king you cannot accept a willing invitation you must go there without his knowledge. You have to go uh, to Carcosa to end it. But you cannot go from here. You have to go from your world. So, if you truly want to break away from the king, first you must get out of this hospital and then you have to find your way to Carcosa if you wish to meet the king stay here and we'll find a way to get you there Bobby and he smiles yes so do you want to go back Yes, I think I have made that extremely clear. I can... I can help. 
but you'll have to follow me. I want to bring them all with me. It's not just me. All who? Roger. These two and... Okay. Well, you can speak with them, and if you guys really want to go, I can... I can show you the way. It's not easy, but it can be done. When? How soon? Time is meaningless. <laughs> when you're ready to go, you let me know. And then we'll just cut. <sighs> and end there. And then open up on a gray room. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh -oh. Playing gray walls. And click, these double doors open. And in walk three orderlies leading Roger. He's just walking along, allowing them to take him, not, not fighting back. And in the middle of this room is a another sort of bed with harnesses, only it's pitched up so that you would be kind of like at a 45 degree angle, but straight up off the floor, you know, like standing straight, but at a 45 degree angle. And they walk you over and there's places for your feet to slide in and there's straps and everything. And they're just like, Mr. Ed's like, get in Roger or we have to put you in. Fuck me. <laughs> Damn fight. You know, like I could fucking kill all three of these guys, but I imagine in this scenario, there's just endless orderlies that can come in. Um, <laughs> but I know I could kill these guys, and Roger feels confident he could kill the three of them. But he knows. I imagine I walked by other people. It's going to be uh, too much. So Roger's like, uh, yeah, I guess I, uh, guess I ran my mouth in there a little bit, and he's like slowly getting into the the thing taking his time Can I ask you a question guys um, do you like it here because I'm thinking about taking off <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's no reason that you have to stay here is that a fact there's a yeah. guy down at your feet and he starts putting a strap over your left foot yep. tightening it oh, you're going to get out of here are you well we'll see I have to talk to the king um but, uh, you know, this uh, doctor, it's not your boss. Another strap goes over. And as this strap goes over and the guy stands up, we see standing up in the doorway is Dr. Friend. And he's just standing behind looking at you. It's dead set to turn them all against me, are you, Roger? Well, I'm just letting them know they have a choice. Um, it's kind of sad that you have to do this. Am I that much of a threat to you? And then the next strap goes in, and the next strap. Roger, don't consider it a, a punishment, of course. And well, well, what would you call it? This doesn't seem like uh, something friends would do. Yo, your name sucks. <laughs> You're no friend. <laughs> <laughs> your name sucks. Roger, there is no need for hostility. It is not a punishment. Uh, it is, uh, call it research. Mm. Another strap goes down. <laughs> And then a strap across the chest. And then a strap across the uh, gut. And then a strap across the upper thighs. You know, everything is sort of getting strapped down so that you can't move. And then the strap comes over your forehead and pulls your head tight to the, uh, to the board. Friend steps into the room and then stepping in behind him, flanking him, are two nurses, two women that uh, you hadn't seen yet, hadn't seen before. <sighs> And one of them is holding a tray. And on the tray is, it's like a little golden tray with a little like, uh, almost like tissue paper underneath. Ah, uh, no, like the paper you see at like a dentist's office, right? Like uh, just paper that is designed for uh, sanit sanitary sort of uh, transmission of things. Uh, she's holding this little tray with a little paper uh, thing underneath it. And sitting on top of it is an enormous syringe with like a plunger that's like this deep around and a needle that's like this long and she walks up and you are immobilized in this chair mm -hmm. 
and he's like, Roger, I believe that your comments today are not made out of hatred or some sort of petty jealousy, nor out of some need to wound me. I believe that they were made, and he holds up this syringe, and there's nothing in it. The plunger is completely depressed. He's like, I believe that they were made because you have insights, Roger. You know something. And I love that in my patients. Let's find out, shall we? How deep does the knowledge go? And he gets oh, closer no. and closer to you, and he starts coming up to your eye. Oh, oh and this no. needle that starts no. coming toward you. And right in your left eye, where it, that little, where your little tear duct is there, where it meets. No! He takes this pin and plunges oh, the needle directly uh, into the interior of your eye. No, and it's just like, no, ah! no. and he begins pulling on the plunger. Oh, no. And you can see, ah, like out of your other <laughs> eye, this thick, oily, red oil i couldn't you couldn't even call it blood it's Mm -hmm. just like coming out from inside of your head and it is filling and it is filling and it is filling and we will see you next week he's like please stop filling please stop filling it's like a shower right off oh my god shower right now man Quit. Oh, yes. Undo. Undo. Control Z. Oh, Control Z. Yeah. Oh, great job. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. What is that that oh. came out of his eye? <laughs> we'll see you next time. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>